getting into the COVID isolation uh, facility right, uh, yeah. by allegedly uh, connects. Right, what it was. But right. I mean, Bree, that, that came out from uh, Adeloupe, right? And, you know. And he did confirm that yeah. he did call his sister-in-law. I, I messaged uh, him uh, just this morning. I wanted to give him the opportunity to uh, respond. Yeah. And um, he said, "Yeah, send me the link," and I and I did. And just wow. I think we he got was kinda, at the hospital. He wasn't. At the yeah, hospital yeah. Pack. And so when we when the the Zoom when you come out of the Zoom, it's you turn on the video. Obviously, we saw him hooked up to all the stuff, and mm-hmm. uh, so he is admitted at the Guam Memorial Hospital. Um, I didn't, you know, mm-hmm. didn't see. He said his doctor, Dr. Ho Win, right. who is also on the governor's uh, physicians advisory group, uh, said that he had a viral pneumonia and is a clinical COVID patient, although testing negative. Yeah, and I mean, we do want people to go to the ISOFAX, but uh, it's clear we have public health on, you know, multiple times a week that there's a whole uh, protocol for that. Uh, but, you know, Dr. Wen, uh, the congressman, uh, mm-hmm. seemed to say that there was nothing fishy about it. Uh, but, uh, you know, one of the allegations that Congressman St. Nicholas uh, had made was uh, levied against uh, his opponent in this uh, election, which is happening on Tuesday. So this has got to be... In recent memory, one of the craziest weekends before an election that, I mean, I'm not even that that I can remember, but I thought I'd seen it all in Guam politics. <laughs> uh, but Congressman uh, Mike St. Nicholas uh, calling out former delegate Robert Underwood. Um, uh, and we got Underwood on the Zoom right now. Good morning, uh, Congressman. Uh, good morning. Good morning, Chris. Uh, good morning to you and uh, Sabrina. And, uh, Sabrina, and uh, thank you very much for this opportunity. And, uh, right. And uh, first of all, I just want to, uh, um, uh, uh, Narissa and I pray every uh, day, and we pray for particularly uh, victims of COVID-19 here in Guam. And uh, we just want to, uh, we said a prayer for uh, the, the uh, quick recovery of uh, Mike and Nicholas this morning. Right. Were you able to catch his uh, brief interview on the link this morning, Robert? No, I did not. And uh, so I, I'm, I'm not sure uh, about what he said. I only heard the chatter that... Uh, the the uh, the interview came to an abrupt end. But, yeah. So, Bree, um, if you want to kind of go over what the uh, congressman had, had said, um, in a nutshell, he, he was saying, "When is enough enough?" Uh, politicking with respect to him, you know, he is sick. He's at a uh, GMH. He called for the uh, resignation of uh, Carlo Branch. He mentioned uh, your name, um, and so yeah, it's called it politics, basically making an issue of him uh, being at the ISOFAC facility and now uh, at the Guam Memorial Hospital. Well, uh, well, of, of course, uh, you know, I haven't even talked to Carlo Branch in um, maybe three or four months. So uh, this is uh, t- uh, totally, uh, uh, to use a term that was used uh, last week, totally a fabrication, uh, you know, uh, they're, they're, and, and, but in any event, that's not really the issue. The issue is not about whether uh, uh, Delegate St. Nicholas should have been in the, the facility or shouldn't be in the facility. Uh, he is ill and we wish him well and we hope for a speedy recovery. The issue is what is in front of the people of Guam. And the issue really is that we have a choice. And we have a choice between leadership, which is honest and has integrity and is willing to put themselves in front of uh, the people in a live forum in a debate. I've been calling for debates now for several weeks. None is going to happen. And the, instead of engaging in a debate, we just hear sniping on the side. And uh, that's unfortunate. But in any event, I'm ready to debate. I'm ready to debate via Zoom. There's a forum coming up uh, this evening on uh, Megamix. And uh, I've agreed to be on that forum. As, I think as uh, Senator Castro has as well. Yeah. And so the issues, are, are broader. As Delegate St. Nicholas is going to recover. Uh, this controversy, so-called controversy, is going to recede into the in, into into memory. But what is in front of the people of Guam is enduring. How do you want your representative to behave, and how do you which representative, which candidate has a plan for moving forward? That's why this issue, this this uh, election is so important. So yeah. uh, while I, I certainly wish him well, I don't wish him ill. Mm. Uh, uh, th- this is not about politics. 
this is about the people's future. And uh, so the, the, the implication, always the implication that there's some kind of collusion going on is just absolute nonsense. You know, Robert, uh, how, how uh, difficult or challenging was it? I mean, you're running against Will Castro. You're running against Mike Nicholas, right? But um, you've, a lot of your campaign has been uh, talking about the ethics investigation, talking about the uh, congressman's voting record. Uh, but he's refused to engage really on, on any of these, uh, you know, and many would say they're very relevant issues to this election. Uh, so how's it kind of been uh, in their shadow boxing in your campaign? I mean, this is the most well, engagement you've got out of the congressman. It was him calling you out from his hospital bed. I, I, I don't look at it as shadow boxing. I look at it as truth telling. We've told the truth, and I think it's going to have an impact on the voters. And that's really uh, what that's about. Uh, it's sort of ironic, you know, when I started off this campaign, I'm 72 years of age. And uh, I got comments from a lot of people, you're too old, uh, why don't you go rest up, take a nap, go to the <laughs> ranch, do something that old people do. And as it turns out, I'm the healthiest guy running for Congress. Easy so. there, don't jinx it. <laughs> I'm not, I, I'm not, I, I just say that as a, as a sidebar. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. The, the, it, but the, but it, in an ironic I way, day. here I am, a 72-year-old man calling for debates, um, alive and well, and doing okay, and I'm more energized than I was at the beginning of the campaign. And, and you know, it really still is. And, and, and I, I just respectfully ask the media, and I also respectfully ask the public, that this is really not about the individual delegate but it is in terms of the kind of representation you want in Washington. We've unveiled a very comprehensive plan. I've told, talked about my record in Congress from the past. I've talked about my record as president. Uh, I'm not shadow boxing. I'm telling people uh, what I know to be true and what I can back up with uh, facts. Thank, thank you, Robert, uh, for coming on. Uh, appreciate you coming on uh, quickly to, to respond to the uh, words that the congressman had uh, thrown at you. So, appreciate it. Thank you. Have All a right. great day. You too. Stay well. So, what's your Stay secret? Safe. You take vitamins or is it, what, <laughs> you down a gallon of Lodigo my, every morning? My secret, my secret is I pray and I eat regularly. Okay, let me try that. I, I got but, to but eat regularly. I'll, I'll admit to one thing. I'll admit to one thing. In fact, let me admit to this. I have a pain in the neck on occasion, and I go to the chiropractor. And uh, so I'm going to the chiropractor uh, this morning, uh, but I'm not going to put it on Facebook. Oh. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Thanks. Robert. All right, 727. Uh, let's get Father Paul Goff again on real quick, and then we're going to run right over to public health uh, as we're starting to catch up with our... We had a plan going into this morning. <laughs> All right, Paul, you had a plan? Yeah, we had a plan. There's a plan. Uh, and so let's get a Father Paul. We wanted to get Father...